And welcome back, everybody. You know, spring is here. Has spring sprung? We will see. It often comes with a lot of allergies. And joining us with all the details on symptoms and cures, we have Alicia Schwartz with us from the Visiting Nurse Services of New York, Choice Health Plans. We welcome you. Thank you. Not a stranger to the show. No, I'm not. So people are sneezing and coughing and carrying on. What's happening when spring springs? Well, there's a lot of pollen. Or spring has sprung. <laughs> <laughs> there's a lot of pollen in the air. Grass is beginning to grow. The trees are flowering away. Uh -huh. So that brings a lot of allergies to people. And individuals don't realize they have it. Uh -huh. Actually, allergies affect 50 million people in the USA, costing yeah. a, to, a, approximately $2 billion in cost just to take care of this. And uh, people don't realize that they have allergies. Some people think they have a cold, and they're yeah. not sure. And it um, may stay with them for some time, yeah. the duration of the season? or It can stay during duration of the season. Sometimes it ends in the summer. Sometimes it doesn't. And actually, it comes back in the fall. Yeah, because we've got a number <laughs> of things. we got the, the high pollen, tree pollen. you get ragweed. you get got mold spurs. Yeah, and this spores. is the sixth leading cause of chronic conditions in the USA. Ah. So it's up there. It's high up there in symptoms. So how are we doing it with your organization, Visiting Nurses? So we teach our individuals uh, to differentiate allergies between cold because there's a big difference you know cold doesn't last more than two to weeks ah. allergies continue on throughout the whole season um, they get the itchy eyes they get the post nasal drip they get very congested their sinuses get congested yeah, yeah. and then they'll complain oh I have a lot of mucus in the back of my throat well there's something happening there and you got to take care is of it. Is that pollen? Is well what happens is your it's your immune system fighting, fighting against back normal stuff. So this is our way of our body saying, you know, I don't like this, let me get rid of it. And they start creating um, some reactions that shouldn't be happening yeah. with normal stuff. So what do we do? So normally we have to see the doctor. People try to wait, wait. take... <laughs> yes, the doctor should be involved. Go see the doctor. Yes. Okay. The reason for that is because we elderly tend to take medications. They have chronic conditions that can affect allergies, can worsen their conditions. So we want to make sure that they get treated correctly. Some medications of uh, antihistaminic, which we take over the counter, yeah. can yeah. affect their medications as well. So oh. we don't want that to happen. Happen. Yeah, so we have to watch what we're mixing. Yes, exactly. Over the counter with prescribed medication yeah. and the foods that you eat and yeah. the vitamins and minerals there that you, you take go. too. There you go, exactly. The second thing we want to, want to teach them is how to take care of their homes and how to take care of themselves. Mainly, you need to make sure you wash your clothes and, and you wash your bed sheets weekly. Because the pollen can stay in your bed sheets. You want to make yes. Ah. You want to make sure they take showers before going to bed. Make sure they get rid of all that pollen that stayed with them when they oh, were outdoors. Oh, because when you're running outdoors, it's in your clothes it's and your, your hair is like a filter. <laughs> yes. And you're running through and it's picking up all this pollen and you put your head down on your pillow. <laughs> and, and now you have your it. Oh, I got you. All right. The other thing we want to make sure is that they cover their their mattresses with uh, plastic covers. Covers, the covers that are for dust mites because dust mites also create an allergic reaction to us and people don't realize that. Um, um, you want to make sure you clean your nose. You can use the saline spray or I had a doctor. Before you go to bed you be blow your nose and clean up your nose? Before you go to bed and when you come inside your home because if you're outside you created all that pollen it's stuck to your little oh, nasal hairs. Um, so you use a saline spray. Yes. I had a doctor that used to say just take a, warm, a damp cloth and just clean it inside, yeah. you know, just to make sure you take that pollen. And that's a good habit to come when you come from outdoors, and it's a good habit to do when you're going to bed as well. Yeah, so clean yourself inside out. Inside out. But what about gargling? Uh, gargling is good. It's, it takes care of the mucus as well. So, you know, a little water mm -hmm. with a little bit of salt, mix it well and gargle with it. Mm -hmm. But actually drinking a lot of fluids is great because it, that also loosens the mucus up. Yeah, look at that. So wait a minute. You're going to come in, take your clothes off, maybe dust them out in the bathtub, <laughs> you know, and then throw them in the hamper, wash those clothes. Yes. You don't have to wash them that You don't night, have to wash them, them that hamper, night. Exactly. Get, get rid of them. Get rid of them. <laughs> and then jump in the shower, wash your, your tail, and then, you know. <laughs> Blow Make your sure, nose. Yes, there, there you go. Exactly. <laughs> Saloon <laughs> solution. <laughs> muy, muy bien. That's yeah. perfect. <laughs> And then uh, take care of your pillows and your sheets. Exactly, because that's where everything lays. Now, wait a minute. Every oh, well, you don't have to clean your sheets and your pillows every night. No, once a week. Once is a good. week. 
Maybe yes. take it and hold out the window and hit it a little bit. Uh, uh, Get the pela. <laughs> the pela, no pela. <laughs> the other thing you want to make sure is keep your temperature in the home around the 60s. Higher than 70 will create mold and oh, all that okay. to surface and, and grow. And one of the things is when there's humidity outside, you want to make sure they turn the air conditioner on because the humidity is droplets of water, but they pick up all that dust and they create it where we're, where we're breathing yeah. and we're breathing that in more. Yeah, you so, know what grows mold, dust yes. and humidity. Exactly. So you want to take care of and all darkness. that. darkness. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> so those oh, are the Boy, there's so much that we have to do, right? Yes. But that's great. Anything but there's else? treatment. There's a lot of treatments, you know. Like I said, you can take your medications, see your doctor. You might have to see an allergist to find out what you're allergic to. Yeah. Because that's important. If it's ragweed, you want to make sure that at that time when ragweed is out, you're not outdoors. You're indoors. And, and you may want to eliminate the food because they'll give you a food allergy test also. They'll, so exactly. it could be food allergy, it could be pollen, it could be a and lot of things. It could be dust in your home. That's right. You want to clean the dust from your home and best way to, vacuum cleaner. the best way to clean dust is taking a damp cloth and cleaning the surfaces. You know, spraying things, using Clorox, those strong things can also affect. Oh, thank you guys so much for all the work that you're doing. Thank you for your service. You're of welcome. Of course, uh, give a hug to everybody over at the, the BNS NY. I was going to. BNS NA. NY. NY. The Volunteer Nurse Services. Thank you guys. You guys do some great work. Thank you so much. We appreciate you. Nice. Give her a big hand, everybody. Alicia Schwartz, RN, BNS NY Choice Health Plans. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. That was good information there. You're welcome. I'm going to go home and do that today. We're going to take a quick break. Stay right there. We'll be right back with more. Open. Coming to you from our BronxNet studios, four new shows highlighting some of